Let's all stand. Great to see each and every one of you here today. And I think it'd be all right if we just open with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to be with us here in this service today. Would you join with me? God, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your house. God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask that you would move by your spirit in this place today. God, let your glory to shine upon us. Let your work and your will be done in each and every one of us here today. And God, we'll be quick to give you praise and glory and honor as you so deserve. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. If you're thankful today, we worship you, O Lord. my shepherd he goes before me defender behind me I won't I'm filled with This morning. Oh, he gives me a shot. 
It's your spirit today, Lord. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. within us today. morning why don't you give the Lord some praise right now come on his word declares that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we don't have to fear any evil because he'll be right there beside us aren't you thankful today
today. My God is awesome. The day I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. Why I'm living.
like you, Lord. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we worship you today. You are high and lifted up, oh God. Nobody like our God. 
There's nobody higher. There's nobody greater. Come on, somebody lift up a shout of praise today. Come on, there's nobody like our God. Come on, he's high and lifted up today. Why don't you just lift your hands all across this house and give him some praise from the depths of your heart and from the depths of your soul.
to be upon us today. God, we want your grace and your mercy to flood our soul. God, we want you to perform the miraculous in our life today. God, we want you to perform healings today. Let strength come into lives today. Thank you, Lord. We need a move. Yes, we do. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and Thank you, Lord, for your touch in this house. Nobody like you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beautiful presence of the Lord in the place today. God is good to us. Amen. We are grateful for everything that God has performed. And my heart is full of appreciation and thanksgiving for what God has done. You may be seated. 
Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you're here. And like has already been mentioned, it is so good to have Brother Sister Julie and James with us and Lexi back in the house of the Lord today. It's been a long week for them, I know. And we are so thankful for what God has done and the hand of God upon their life. And just thank God for it. Amen. I don't know what else to say, but we are so thankful for what God has given to us. And I do encourage you to, to continue to pray uh, for these folks and others that have been dealing with uh, a lot of circumstances and situations, amen, that have been going on in their life, amen. I do want to also just mention to all of our young people that were part of the youth convention, I appreciate your involvement, your worship. Your uh, just getting into those services and reaching out to God. It doesn't stop, though, on Friday night. Uh, we're continuing on and believe God to help us and uh, thankful for what the Lord has, in fact, done in us and through our church. Praise God. Amen. Youth were revived. Amen. And some of the older folks that were there are probably tuckered out and revived, but uh, it was a good time, good preaching, good worship, and it was just a great time, amen. I would mention actually to our ladies that uh, you need to register for the ladies retreat uh, conference that's coming up and uh, get that taken care of. You need to go be a part of it. It's right here in Bangor, and uh, you don't, won't have far to go and, and enjoy the fellowship, teaching, preaching of of that conference. Amen. Also right here locally, let me mention to you ladies that on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock there is a uh, time together here at the church for all of those that are 18 years of age and up. So all of the ladies that are 18 years and up plan to be here on Tuesday evening 6 o'clock. And matter of fact um, I think Sister Elizabeth would like to have a, a head count so that we kind of know, uh, usually our events have food involved, and so uh, they want to make sure that there's enough. And so if you're planning to be here on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, ladies, would you go ahead, just raise your hand and keep it up for a moment or two. Uh, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven right here that we know, okay? All right. Great. I do encourage you to be involved in our district events and, of course, our local events. I believe God is blessing. I believe great things are happening. And uh, we've got to continue on serving the Lord and just giving God our very, very best. Things are happening all around us, pointing to the soon coming of the Lord. And above everything else, folks, I want you to know, above everything else, I must be saved. I've got to be saved. And you have got to be saved as well. And that's really what it's all about. Amen. I do want your life down here on, on earth to be a good life. And it's a good life living for the Lord. But when it's all said and done, I want you to hear him say, well done. Praise God. I have a faith and a trust in God today. I want to bring your attention to the word of the Lord Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. And this is what it says. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 states, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Thou wilt keep us in perfect peace. Thou wilt keep me in perfect peace. Those whose mind is stayed on thee. I want to pause right here for just a moment. 
I want you to close your eyes and I want you to just think about the goodness of the Lord. Jesus. Get your mind right on him right now, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I want my mind to be focused on you. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee, continually trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. I want to challenge us today. I want to talk to us today concerning this subject, affirming our faith and trust in God. Let's pray together. God of heaven, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, Lord, today for the opportunity to be able to look into your word, to be able to preach your word, to be able to, God, expound upon the things that are written in that book. God, I pray that you, Lord, would touch our hearts and minds, those that will listen later on this evening, those that are in the parking area right now. I pray a blessing upon them. And God, for every soul that's under the sound of my voice in this opportunity, auditorium, I pray, God, that you would move upon them and strengthen them, Lord, and let them to feel your love and your strength and your power in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I hope over the next few minutes I will not uh, bore you and I will not uh, uh, put you uh, to sleep, but will be able to challenge you that at the end of this message, you will, in fact, affirm your faith and your trust in God. I'm getting some ringing up here, so I don't know what that's all about. Um, when the psalmist wrote the words, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I believe that he was doing just what I am preaching on here today. I believe that he was saying something to uh, like this. I am affirming, I'm stating as a fact, asserting strongly and publicly. I am making a formal declaration, a declaration of faith, a complete trust and confidence in someone other than myself. A declaration of trust, a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, and strength of someone else. And that someone else, for me to make that kind of a declaration, is Jesus Christ. When I survey the social, political, moral landscape of our world today, I cannot help but believe that, but that we are living in perilous times. For the conditions that are mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 3 are very prevalent in our world today. And for that reason, I am preaching that this is the time for the redeemed of the Lord to say so. Not only in word, but also in deed. This is the time for the salt of the earth to season our world as we have been commissioned to do by the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time for the people that have heard from God to declare His saving and keeping power. I'm reminded in the example that God gave to us from the Apostle Paul when the Apostle heard from God and he looked upon a ship full of crewmen and said, I exhort you to be of good cheer. What do you mean, be of good cheer? We're in a storm and everything that we've been hoping for has basically been tossed overboard and has been lost. We've been in this for a long period of time and you're telling us 
be of good cheer. The apostle went on and said, For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying this, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, along with that, God hath given to you all of them that sail with thee. And he went on and he said, wherefore, sirs? He said, because of all of that. He said, be of good cheer. Why? For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. Folks, let me tell you something. We have received a message from the Lord. We have the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no reason for us to withhold this good news. I share it with you here today. I share it with those that are in the parking area, those that will listen online today. We have the good news of the saving power of Christ, His blood that was shed for us, the resurrection, the power of the Holy Holy Ghost and all of the things that have been promised to us. Be of good cheer because I believe that God will do just as God has said he will do. Today, we need to affirm our faith and our trust in God. Do we believe and trust in God? You say, well, pastor, I, I do believe in God, but I've got to ask you the question. Do you have faith in the God that you believe in? Do you have trust in the God that you believe in? Do you have that relationship with him that you have faith and trust in that God? Today, I want to affirm in our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and in His Word. Words such as this. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's just one small part of a great plan that God has for you and for me. That's just a little segment. That's just kind of the end of the story. That's where we're all going to be ending up, caught up to be with the Lord. And the apostle went on and said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. I will assure you today there is much comfort to be found in the Word of God. Is there anybody that will agree with me today? I want you to understand there is much power that is recorded right here between these covers today. And it's for you and it's for me. It's something that will enliven us and revive us and lift us up and encourage us. Amen. I'm thankful for the Word of God today. Do I dare say that your current spiritual condition doesn't have to be your eternal spiritual condition? Do I dare to say to a world that may be looking another way than, than looking at Jesus Christ that their spiritual condition doesn't have to stay that way? Maybe they are morally bankrupt. Maybe their minds and hearts are perverse with the things of this world and the thoughts of this world. But I want to declare a message to each of you and to them as well that the current spiritual condition of this world and in your life doesn't have to be your eternal spiritual condition. 
If you're defeated, if you're lost in sin, if you're overcome by adversity, defeat is not the intended end of your story. Hear me today. Defeat and destruction is not the end of God's story for your life. Amen. It's time for us to receive the encouragement that the Word of God has for us us uh, and the power of God working in us uh, that we would live on for Jesus Christ uh, until his coming for the Lord is with us amen can you say amen is the Lord with you today Praise God. If he's not, then before you leave the house of God today, you need to make sure that you don't leave here by yourself. How can I do that, Pastor? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And it'll be the one, and he'll be the one that will go home with you here today. Praise God. The foundations are being shaken. Can you say amen? And the things godly are being challenged like never before. Can you say it again? This is the day when we need to truly pledge our allegiance sinking our spiritual teeth into the Bible, God's holy word, making it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and hiding its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. This is our moment to step out of the shadows This is our chance and our opportunity, young and old, to declare to a hopeless world, a hopeless people, a world that is dark in sin and immorality and a long list of of things that, that the world is involved in. But I'm reminded of the scripture as the apostle began to go through those things and he summed it all up as he looked to the church and he said, and such were some of you. I'm declaring to our world today that you don't have to remain in those conditions. You don't have to stay in that place. It can be said of you, yes, that's what you used to be. That's what you used to do. And that's what you used to be involved in. But today, you're a brand new man. Today, you're a brand new creature in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. And now Now all things have become brand spanking new. Amen. It's time for us as the church to declare help is coming from the Lord. Faith and trust are indispensable assets to the success of every Christian. Knowing and believing in the ways and means of God will fortify your mind and spirit as you endeavor to to navigate His way through your life. Let that sink in for just a moment. You're going to need some trust and and you're going to be able to, you're going to need some some faith. You're going to need those things working in your life. If you're going to be able to live a life on this earth and do his will, you're going to need faith and you're going to need trust. You will discover your inherent need of the word of God, the book and the spirit you're going to discover that you can't make it through the days without that written word and without his spirit moving in your life so pastor i can do this on my own i can do this by myself i i can i can make it i'm pretty strong i'm pretty wise i'm pretty this and that but i want you to understand you're not going to make it the devil's too much for you to handle and the world is too much for you to handle as an individual 
individual. Your flesh is too much for you to be able to handle. You're going to need God. You're going to need the Word of God. You're going to need the Spirit of the Lord. And today's the day that we need to lift up our hands and say, God, I need you. I need you, God, more than anything else in all of the world. Amen. Amen. There's the danger of our faith and trust diminishing, becoming non-obligatory. I'm not going to be obligated to my faith and trust. I can, I can make it on my own. I can make it without faith and trust in Him. Faith and trust can be taken for granted, especially in the good times. In the good times and the easy seasons, you know, it's not so hard to trust and have faith. I'm reminded of the individual in the scripture going through such a difficult time. And the Lord was challenging to believe, to believe. He said, God, I believe, I believe. But you've got to help mine unbelief. You've got to help mine unbelief. You may be here today in the back of your mind, in the back of your spirit. You said, I do believe, Pastor, I do believe. But I need some help with some unbelief. Some things have been bombarding my mind and my spirit. I'm here to tell you that there is strength in the house of the Lord. In the spirit that I feel in this room even right now. That you can, you can extend your hands up and you just say, God, I need, I need more faith and more trust in you. I, I need you to help me right now. And I just got a feeling that you would feel the saturation of the spirit of the Lord come over you as you do that. Jesus' name. It can all be taken for granted in the good times. Faith and trust can often be forgotten on the mountaintops. But let me remind you that in your valley of decision or in the midst of your sudden storm, oh yeah, we noticed some sudden storms this past week or so. I want to tell you something. When the sudden storm comes up, you're going to need some faith. You're going to need some trust in the Lord. You're going to bank some of that faith and trust and assurance like you're feeling in this room right now. And you're going to put it in your heart and put it in your spirit. And when that sudden storm comes up, you're going to be taking some out of those deposits that you've allowed to be in your spirit. And you're going to be very glad that you had taken the time to put that trust and that faith in your spiritual bank account so that when the storms came up and in those moments you were able you were able to tap in to the presence and power of God at those times you will be so thankful that you packed your bags with faith and trust you see it's in the storm where our faith and trust is tested it's in the storm that you're going to need all the faith and trust that you can muster. Hear me when I say your faith and trust is being attacked by an enemy in an attempt to get you to lay it down. Just put it down. Just lay it down. Forget about it. But I don't want to just for a moment take you back to our scripture setting from the Proverbs Solomon challenges us with a few concepts of faith and trust he starts it right off and he says trust in the Lord as I read that I was reminded of Jesus' words when he said have faith in God let me ask you a few questions. Who do you go to when the storm starts to rise against you? Who do you go to first? Who's the first one that you call? I ask that because we usually go to the one who we trust the most first. That's who we usually go to. I wonder today, 
do we go and trust in the Lord? Oh, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I like that song too. But I can't get over one little part. And maybe you can explain it to me later. But where do I go when there's nobody else to turn to? Wait a second. Wait a second. Rewind this somehow. God can't be the last one that we go to. God can't be, you know, that I've tried everybody else, I've tried everything else, and God, you're my last option, so here I am. I think our faith and trust in Jesus Christ needs to be, you know what, I'm going to you first. I'm going to turn to you at the very beginning. I'm going to get right to you because I have faith and I have trust in you the most. The second question I'd like to ask of each of you here today is, Who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? Oh, pastor, you've heard it, people. You've heard that sports star. And he said, hey, guys, we've just got to believe. They're entering the championship game. They're entering into the time when, you know, all the the men are separated from the boys, if you please, and the losers and the winners and all of that. The champions are going to be determined. uh, And they get in their locker rooms and they say, oh, you you got to believe. you got to believe. you got to believe. My question is, who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? Oh, pastor, I have faith. I have faith. I have trust. In who? That's my question. Who do you have faith in? And who do you have trust in? Is your faith in faith? Is your trust in trust? Or is your faith in God and your trust in God? You better understand something from this preacher today. You may be able to look at your abilities and your training and your understanding of the game that you're in. But you better understand something when it comes to living for the Lord and making it through this life. You're going to have to have faith and you're going to have to have trust. But that faith and trust has got to be in Jesus Christ. The wise man went on and he said, you're going to have to love him. You're going to have to trust him with all of thine heart. Entirely, completely, and totally. With everything that there is within you. Not partial love, not partial passion, not partial commitment, not a partial offering, but completely and totally giving yourself unto God and trusting and having faith in Him. He went on and said, lean not unto thine own understanding. Uh, Pastor, I've got a brain, you know. You don't have to tell me everything to do. And and I'm not stupid. Uh, I've got some, you know, I've got some training and some understanding and all of that. Uh, But lean not unto thine own understanding. I'm not telling you not to use your brains today. I'm telling you don't use your brain to the place where that it puts God out of the picture. God has got to be in that brain of yours. Use your brain under the direction and under the supervision of the almighty God and his word. Lean not unto thine own understanding. And don't talk yourself out of a miracle. Peter fished all night long. And he said, you know, I'm I'm sick and tired of this kind of an operation going on. I'm hanging up the nets for the day or for the night. But the Lord said, hey, Pete, I want to give you a little instruction. If you'll just go ahead and throw the net on the other side, on the right side of the ship then it's going to be different than what you have been doing. His understanding said, you don't know anything about fishing. I've been in the fishing business all the days of my life. I know what it is to fish. I know where to cast the net. I know how to, you know, kind of wiggle the pole there, whatever it is to make them jump and bite the, the, the worm. But let me tell you something. Let me just tell you. 
He could have very well talked himself out of the greatest miracle or one of the greatest miracles in his life. Because he would have been leaning on his own understanding. I want to just say something here and, and probably get in trouble for saying it, but let me just say it anyway. God doesn't want our mindset to be framed by the concepts and by the teaching and the understanding of the world. I'm going to tell you that Wall Street has a different financial plan than what the Word of God has. And it's just the, that's the way it's going to be. And uh, psychiatrists and psychologists and all of the different things, they have their worldly, and they may be able to help in certain circumstances and situations. Some of the principles, they do remain true in, in different areas. But God does not want our mindset to be framed by those types of things. We are, we are shaped, amen, I believe, by the Word of God. God's word, amen. You know what? Let me just say this too. I'm, I might get in trouble with this one too. But when, when, when man's word and God's word contradict, all right, somebody's lying, okay? Somebody's lying. When the word of God does not agree with man's word, trust me, <laughs> they're not cohabitating here. They're, they're somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. In my opinion, let God be true and every man a liar. I will take God's word above man's word every single time. Amen, amen, amen. And of that, I affirm my faith and my trust in the word of God today. Let me tell you something else about the word of God and the ways of God and how fast God can change some things in your life if you'll allow him to do so. Mark chapter 11, I believe it is, and his disciples are coming uh, with Jesus into Jerusalem, and they come to a fig tree, and the fig tree has leaves on it, and Jesus is hungry, and he goes to the fig tree, and he's, he's looking for some figs, and there's no figs there on. He's disappointed, and he curses the tree, remember that? He cursed the fig tree, said, you, you're not going to, you're not going to bear fruit from, from, from now forever, and uh, they went into the town, they went into town, they came back out. And they came back in the next day. And the next day, that tree was withered. The Bible says it was in the morning as they passed by. They saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance the words of Jesus. Oh, boy. <laughs> the word of God had something to do with what was going on over the night. Let me tell you something. Don't you think that God can't turn around, turn around your life in a heartbeat Amen. And, and deliver you in a, in a moment's time. And the work of God, is, it's, it's quick, it's powerful. And, and, and I just want to tell you that he can turn your situation around just, just so very, very quickly. And the Bible says that it was in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree. And Peter said, wow. <laughs> Lord, the fig tree that you cursed, it's all withered away. What was, what, was, what was so uh, magnificent, what was so astounding to Peter at that moment was the fact that he said it yesterday and it was taken care of today. It was, it was something that the Lord spoke of and it was, it was basically gone in an instant. I'm, a, I'm here to tell you something, that God can turn a life around in an instant. Uh, I'm telling you that while that, that many may say, oh, it's just going to take a long, 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 long time. And sometimes it does take longer than maybe what's necessary. But if you need a turnaround in your life, God can turn your life around on a dime. He can take care of you in just a moment. That's how fast uh, the things of God can, can change within a person's life. He's on the cross as a thief on the right and the left. Condemned to die. Right? You're going to be lost, man. You're done. Jesus said, now we're going, to, we're going to change some things around in an instant, in a heartbeat. Today, today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yesterday I was doomed and today I'm saved. Hallelujah. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand with me. He shall direct thy paths. If you want God to direct your path, you're going to have to align yourself with the word of God. If you want God to give you direction, 
you're going to have to take the direction that he's already given to you. And I may be, uh, maybe, I think I'm crazy, I don't know. But it just seems to me, if God sent us a letter like this, And I'm going to ignore this. Is he going to send me something special delivery? If I'm going to ignore the the common word, if you please. If if I'm going to ignore the public statement of the book. Am I to expect that God is going to give me some special direction? In my life. Pastor, I need some. I need some help. I need some direction. I don't know what to do. Well, go back and take a little inventory and make sure. First of all. That you're aligning your life up with the public statement. That God has given to all men to be saved. You see, there was a man in the scripture, and he came to Jesus, and he said, Master, good master, what shall I do that I might have eternal life? What do I need to do? He didn't say, what do we have to do? What does everybody else have to do? Collectively, what do we all have to do? He was looking for a special assignment, if you please. He was looking for some understanding for his own life. He needed something from the Lord. He says, what shall I do? Jesus goes right to the commandments. And he begins to, to name them off. Well, you can't commit adultery, and you can't bear false witness, and you know you got to love God, and all the different things that Jesus mentioned to him. And the young man said, "I've done that. I have done that since my youth. I've been doing this for quite some time." Jesus didn't argue with him. He didn't state, oh, but this, that, or the other. No. No. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus loved him. Loved him. And he said, this is what you need to do. You don't read this as a public statement to everybody, right? No. Jesus doesn't say to everybody, go sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, and take up the cross, come and follow me. Special instructions that came directly to that young man to become everything that God wanted for that young man to be. The tragedy of the story is that he was upset and he was angry because he had so much stuff. But the principle is still the same. If we're going to hear from the word, if we're going to hear from the Spirit of God working in us, we're going to have to adhere to what the Bible is saying to us. If you're struggling today, If you're struggling with hearing the Word of God or or the the Spirit of God working in your life and the direction that you need, hmm, take a look at the book. Take a look and discover where your faith and your trust truly is. closing part of this meeting today I go to a situation in the scripture in the book of Exodus chapter 14 we're talking about the Exodus the people of God from the tyranny of Pharaoh and this is what it says in the scripture This is what the enemy had determined that the children of Israel were going to be and and what they were going to do and 
how that they were going to react to all of this. Pharaoh said, of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly. They are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Yeah, they're, they're running out of options. Let me read on. And it says, He will pursue them. And the Lord said, I will be glorified and honored through Pharaoh and all of his army. And the Egyptians shall know without any doubt and acknowledge that I am the Lord. So the Egyptians chased them with all of their horses and war chariots of Pharaoh horsemen and his army and they overtake uh, they overtook them as they camped by the sea Moses said to the people do not be afraid take your stand be firm and confident do not be dismayed and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today for those Egyptians whom you have seen today you will never see again the Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. So the Lord said to Moses, this is what needs to be done. As for the people, tell the sons of Israel to move forward. Tell the sons of Israel to move forward. And as for you, he said, Moses, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. So that the sons of Israel who have moved forward may go through the middle of the sea on dry land. Challenge you today. In the name of Jesus, walk toward that obstacle in Jesus' name. Walk toward that giant in the name of Jesus. Remain calm, assured, your trust and faith in God affirmed. You do your part, and God is going to do His. If He has taken and led you to the place of that Red Sea, Trust me. He said move forward to it. If he brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Lord Jesus, here we are, God, today in a very important moment. I pray right now upon every heart, upon every soul that has heard the word of the Lord. And they're contemplating where to place their faith and trust. They're, they're trying to figure out where they've been and what they've been doing and what's been taking place. And days gone by, but today a reevaluation is occurring in their mind and heart. And the question is rising up. To whom will I put my faith and to whom will I put my trust? I pray, God, even right now in the name of Jesus, that God, every soul, every individual under the sound of my voice, oh God, would affirm right now their faith and their trust in you. The assurance, God, that you're going to keep us. The assurance, God, that you're going to bless us. You'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. God, you'll never abandon us. You'll never push us away. But God, you'll hold us close. I'm asking God that we rise. Right now, Lord Jesus, would affirm our love and our adoration, God, to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. I challenge you right now and invite you to this altar that you would come and you would affirm your faith in Jesus Christ, the one that will never leave you, the one that will never forsake you. And you'd say, God, here I am. Take my life and use it for the kingdom's sake. In the name of Jesus, would you come and reach out to the Lord together with me?
you just lift your hands with me one more time all across this house God we thank you for your word today God an encouraging word God that we can put our trust in you today God that we can stand upon your word and know that every promise that's written in this book we can declare it today God, we can speak to the mountain and it has to be removed because you've put inside of us a measure of faith. And when we activate that faith today with the spoken word, there's no circumstance of life. There's no test and there's no trial that can stand at the mention of your name. And so, God, we call on your name today over each and every family, over every life that is gathered in this house today, those that are out in the parking area today. We we speak your name over them right now. And God, would you pour out blessings upon them? God, would you perform the miraculous in their life? Would you give them encouragement today? Would you strengthen their life, oh God? And we'll give you praise and glory and honor as you so deserve. And let the church say amen. Amen. If you believe that today, why don't you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise of thanksgiving today. And thank you for worshiping with us at Calvary. To all of our guests, make sure you stop by our welcome center on your way out. You can get a gift bag for you. God bless you today. Come join us again on Wednesday evening.
Sunday, we'll be right back here again worshiping the King of Kings. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.